This video documents my journey finding what I consider my ideal Qtech Synergy Q. These Qs have carbon fiber shafts that can be bought separately with different joint sizes. So you aren't actually obligated to buy the entire Synergy Q if you happen to have another butt end that you prefer using. The Qtech Synergy Qs come with many options regarding color and design, weight, shaft diameter, tip, and so on. Ideally, you would test these cues inside a store, determine which one you like, buy it, and support local businesses at the same time. But the reality is that you likely need to play with a cue for a while before you make a long-term commitment. The first challenge is actually finding these cues in a physical store. In my case, the closest Qtech authorized retailer did not even have any Qtech cues aside from the branded display case. I likely needed to special order one, which often means customizing and no returns. There were no other dealers close to me, so contrary to the Qtech website, there was no benefit to me trying to find and purchase my queue from a physical store. I decided to buy online, as most reputable and authorized dealers have a generous try and return period, usually a month or more. This allows ample time to really test out the queues. If you are buying the entire Synergy queue, the first decision is between the SVB Shane Van Boning series or the True Wood queues, both which use the Canadian maple core but are finished differently. The SVB queues come with a satin color of your choice, black, white, red, blue, and the wood queues are surrounded with a walnut or ebony veneer. I personally chose the wood veneer as I find the signature print on the SVB Q's tacky. Between the two wood veneer choices, you have ebony and walnut, but online pictures and videos do not really depict how they look in real life, so I just bought one of each to compare, one with the linen wrap and the other wrapless. I also bought both the 11.8 and 12.5 diameter shafts, each with the default Tiger sniper tip. For unboxing, the cues come in plain and simple packaging considering the price paid. Inside the box, you will find an embroidered patch and a generous amount of cleaning wipes. Both cues are 19 ounces. The shaft weighs close to 4 ounces, with the remainder of the weight in the butt end, which is adjustable. Here are some shots comparing the color differences between the ebony veneer, which is on the top, and the walnut on the bottom. The ebony cue has a linen wrap, and the walnut is wrapless. The 12.5 shaft is attached to the ebony butt end and the 11.8 is on the walnut. Here are my initial look and feel observations comparing the 11.8 and the 12.5 diameter shafts. For similarities, since they are both carbon fiber, they feel really smooth. I don't even use a shooting glove anymore. It is only when I go back to breaking with a wood shaft cue that I realize just how smooth the carbon fiber is in comparison. When shooting, the sound and feedback of the hit is the same as other wood cues that I have used. This isn't always the case with other carbon fiber shafts on the market. Differences, the 12.5 shaft has the older steel collar, which matches the Synergy line of cues. The 11.8 has a newer thin black phenolic collar, which makes it easier to match the shaft with other cues out there, especially those without the stainless steel joint. According to Qtech, this is purely cosmetic and there is no performance difference. The 12.5 has a 15.5 inch pro taper, whereas the 11.8 starts tapering around 9.6 inches, which may bother some people who like to stroke out or shoot with a longer bridge. These differences in taper does not bother me because the carbon fiber is so smooth during stroking. I felt a slight vibration on harder hits with the 11.8 since it is thinner than the 12.5 shaft. The 12.5 has a more consistent solid hit overall. Moving on to actual gameplay observations. Before I continue, I will mention that my shot making skills are not the greatest. So bear with me if my video clips suck or appear amateurish. For similarities, starting with deflection, there are videos out there already testing this but the deflection for both shafts were the same on my eight foot table. For anyone wondering, I also did not find any noticeable improvement over my existing house cues, which I consider quote unquote lower quality in comparison. Shot making for me was mostly the same with both shafts. 
I have been playing with different diameter cues for years without even realizing it. Throughout these past weeks, I have been alternating cues between games and did not notice any increase in shot making difficulty with the 11.8. Any shots that I missed with that cue, I would have also missed with the 12.5 as well. I did not notice any more spin with the 11.8 during what I consider my normal gameplay. I'm not constantly trying to mass say around balls or apply extreme spin if I don't have to. The 12.5 in my opinion can produce more than enough spin for most players, but in theory, the smaller tip diameter of the 11.8 can apply even more. Moving on to the differences, the precision between the 11.8 and the 12.5 is hard to describe. The best analogy I can think of is using a thicker utility knife being the 12.5 versus a smaller, thinner, and flexible Ulfa knife being the 11.8. I can adjust to and cut with both, but I can make much more precise cuts with a smaller knife. Aiming and sighting on the cue ball is different between the two shafts. Some people can see more of the cue ball with the 11.8. Likewise, how you apply and measure tips of spin will differ between the two. It is easier for beginners to hit center ball with the 12.5 without applying unintended spin due to the tip being slightly wider and covering more of the cue ball. This is especially the case for those long straight in shots that will expose any weaknesses in aim, stroke, and shot execution. With the smaller diameter of the 11.8, there is potentially better tip contact when a cue ball is frozen on a rail. This is good if you are trying to avoid elevating the cue too much. Considering both cues were 19 ounces, the 11.8 felt lighter in comparison and needed more delicate speed control. Some shots on the 11.8 had to be hit slightly harder to match the 12.5. On the contrary, it was easier to get really slow speed rolls and stun with the 11.8. I also liked that the 11.8 made it slightly harder for me to slam balls around the table. So which one did I end up keeping? It was a really tough choice and I had to play with both cues for weeks as I like certain things about each one. I like the longer pro taper of the 12.5 and the granular cue ball control that was possible with the 11.8. In the end, I chose the 11.8 shaft because at least for the 19 ounce cues, the 11.8 is so well balanced, it literally feels like an extension of my arms and hands. My current goals are unique to myself. I have not played competitively for over 10 years and honestly, I had to relearn some fundamentals starting back from how to show. With the 11.8, it is more likely to expose any inconsistencies and weaknesses. Like many, the eventual goal is to be able to play position, and if the 11.8 really does make things more challenging, I am up for it. The 11.8 shaft feels better with the close bridge that I use, and ultimately this may be the deciding factor for you, because everything else between these two shafts are just so similar. I ended up choosing the walnut and wrapless butt end since the veneer looks more gray and modern to me. If you are looking for a traditional wood color, the ebony is the better choice. I did not notice any issue of sweating on either cues. For those who still can't decide between the 11.8 or 12.5 shaft, if I had to make a suggestion for others out there, I would recommend the 12.5, especially if you are an absolute beginner or you play casually. If you plan to let your guests use your cue, they will appreciate the 12.5 more. 12.5 is the more common recommendation I see online, aside from 13 millimeters. And like a 19 ounce cue, it is a good starting point. The slightly thicker tip is more forgiving in terms of preventing unintended side spin, but it is not a substitute for bad habits. The main takeaway is that no cue, cheap or expensive, will automatically make you a better player but some setups just happen to make your life easier. That being said, here are the summary of pros and cons for the Synergy Q. For pros, number one, the appearance, the carbon fiber looks good, modern, and it's easy to clean. Number two, durability. The carbon fiber is strong and it could take more abuse than wood. It doesn't warp if you leave it in the trunk of your car. Number three, feedback. The shots feel like a wood cue at least with the sniper tip that I'm using. Number four, I don't have to use a shooting glove anymore, and that's good because most of those rip eventually. And number five, there is a lot of shaft and joint options for those who have existing cues ready. For cons, number one, also for appearance, there's no SVB color options that do not have the signature, 
And honestly, I don't really feel the jagged stainless steel 3D rings that are on these cues. Number two, there's no uni-lock joints. The thread they use is 3 8 by 14. Number three, most stores won't tell you whether you're getting the shaft with the newer or older version of the collar. So if this matters to you, you're going to have to ask and specify when you order. Number four, the glossy wrapless button gets really dirty easily, but that's expected. I think a matte option would have been nice. Finally, for number five, breaking down the 12.5 shaft with the steel collar is significantly harder. I tried mixing and matching the shaft on both of the cues with the same result. I have no idea why this is. If this video helped you in any way today, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.